President Barack Obama went to Asia for more than just fancy food and banquets, but he sure was toasted a lot. Still, what he wanted on his first stop was a trade deal with Japan that could give momentum to the stalled Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations. After frantic meetings, he left full, but empty-handed. Why did it not happen? In part because of opposition to the treaty from inside Japan. Agriculture is highly protected in Japan, to give you one example, but there are other examples to point to, automobiles and so forth. Real limitations, political limitations on Prime Minister Abe. That could signal long delays or even the eventual death of the agreement which President Obama hoped would shape his legacy, a big part of his much talked about pivot to Asia. Japanese officials seem to get what they wanted though, the president talking about islands disputed by Japan and China. The treaty covers all territories administered by Japan. Reporters throughout the trip had one question about that. Will the U.S. defend the Philippines in case the territorial dispute with China... Are you saying that the U.S. would consider using military force were China to have some sort of military incursion? He never really answered that because the reality is not necessarily. Even with his statements of support here, the treaties don't say the U.S. must intervene militarily over what the president repeatedly referred to as rocks. Mr. Obama did sign an agreement to give the U.S. military greater access to bases in the Philippines. So far, the U.S. military has only made a few moves east. About 2,000 U.S. Marines are now rotating into Australia, and the Navy has about 5 percent more of its fleet in the region. The pivot to Asia, apparently on a slow roll. The White House believes even if he's leaving with only one agreement, pivoting requires the president being here in person. And at the very least, they can say that he did accomplish. Patty Colhane, Al Jazeera, Washington.